So the Trudeau government is refusing to exclude tax haven companies from their bailout. Now, this is on the heels of other countries doing exactly that. So first, let me show you a rank and file's take on this. They tweeted out, Trudeau refusing to end public subsidies to corporate tax evaders is a clear signal that neither liberals or Tories will make the wealthy and corporations sacrifice for the 90 plus billion CERB and the CEWS programs. Who will pay? So those are the programs that are um, paying Canadians uh, basically two grand a month, or in the case of students, uh, twelve fifty a month um, for for four months during this uh, during this pandemic. But let me show you other countries that are doing this. So from from Business Insider here, Denmark and Poland are refusing to bail out companies registered in offshore tax havens. So it's not like this is unheard of. No, there are countries that are doing this right now. Yet Trudeau continues to protect these these pro tax haven companies. And after Denmark and Poland did this, France also is doing it. France is barring firms registered in offshore tax havens from its government coronavirus bailout, following similar bans in Denmark and Poland. So in the case of France, I mean, Macron is like Trudeau's best friend, basically. <laughs> they love each other. Um, so when you have even France doing this, uh, for the most part, a very neoliberal nation right now under Macron, um, it shows you Canada definitely has the ability to go forward with this, and they just aren't. Now, I do want to add this little piece of information into the story. This from 2017. Revealed, Justin Trudeau's close advisor helped move huge sums offshore. Stephen Bronfman, who played key role in Canadian PM's rise, was involved in complex offshore web leaked papers show. So that came out during uh, the uh, the Paradise Papers, um, and maybe, I mean, this guy's not involved anymore. But Trudeau definitely has a perspective on the world that is a little different than the average person. His father was a prime minister. So when you grow up privileged like that, you have a certain perspective. And Trudeau continues to operate from that perspective, even in the time of this crisis. Now, look, I'm not going to act like the liberals and the Tories are exactly the same. They're not. Clearly, I think the liberals are doing a better job right now during this pandemic than, than the conservatives would be doing if they were in power. But that doesn't mean they're free from criticism here. The fact is that the focus of both of these parties... Um, both the liberals and the conservatives are of the wealthiest. Their focus is corporations, businesses, and the wealthiest. Now, does that mean the CERB is bad? No, it's good, but it doesn't go far enough. It should have been a universal basic income. The NDP the entire way have, have really pushed these issues, including when it comes to um, excluding these pro-tax haven companies. The NDP have been the ones that have been pushing this whole message forward that the liberals have ended up adopting in many cases. And that's going to be a story I'm also going to get to in this live stream. We're looking at polling right now. Liberals are doing really well in the polls. And the NDP haven't moved. But what's funny is the NDP, as I was saying, have been the ones that have been calling out these issues, have been the ones that proposed a $2,000 a month benefit, were the ones that proposed a 75% uh, percent, uh, wage subsidy. These issues or these policies that the liberals took on, maybe not completely, but we're definitely influenced by those uh, proposals by the NDP. The liberal government, when they do anything good, it's only because they've adopted ideas from other parties or people that, that aren't really um, part of the liberal government. The liberal government, by and large, them and the Tories both limit the conversation. Because they are the focus, because we have this first-past-the-post system where every year most Canadians think, oh, it's going to be the Conservatives or the Liberals, because we have this very narrow focus on politics, it also narrows the conversation when it comes to policy. So it seems like the NDP and what they're proposing isn't, isn't doable because it isn't part of the main conversation of these two parties that largely have a very similar worldview when it comes to the focus on corporations, the focus on private interests, the focus on deregulation. The liberals are just a little better than the conservatives. 
But when it comes to economic policy, they are very similar. And there is a lot more that Trudeau could be doing that he just isn't.